I did want to ask a question, Bob, and kind of piggyback on something that you mentioned earlier about the black comb. If you could briefly describe what you look for in that comb you want to cull, how you how you decide what to get rid of, and just kind of how you dispose of that comb. What do you do? What's your process? Well, you're going to get me on a soapbox here. You know that, right? <laughs> That's okay. We don't. We never have soapboxes on this channel. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to dance around it for a moment. There's two chemicals out there that are very dangerous for us right now. And, you know, 20, 25 years ago, the mite treatment of choice was called apistan, and the active ingredient in it was fluvalinate. And then the mites got resistant to that, and the next one that came along was check mite strips that had kumafos in it. And it only took a, two or three years for the mice to become resistant to that. And then luckily we had Apivar and Amitraz come along after that. And that's been pretty good. It's taken a long time for resistance to build to that. But now that there's a little bit of a resistance to Amitraz and sometimes the Apivar strips don't work so good, people, some people are reverting back to Apistan because it's been long enough that it's actually working good again. This stuff doesn't go away. Ap or check mite, which was kumafos, and apistan, which is fluvalinate, uh, stay in our comb for a very, very long time. They have an extremely long half-life. And those particular chemicals, although in a lab they show a very little uh, toxic reaction with bees, when they come in contact with many other chemicals, they get very, very toxic. Mm -hmm. Just saw Suzette says, I got to be careful what I say. Somebody's going to sue me, but I can't <laughs> help myself. Uh, I just saw a full page ad for, for Apistan in, in Bee Culture magazine two months ago, and it's making a comeback because people are looking for an alternative to Apivar. And this stuff is terrible. Um, it, it, you know, it just doesn't go away. It, it survives the wax rendering process. It's still present after you heat your wax and melt it and render it. Um, and it builds with repeated uses. In other words, if you use it over and over and over, you have more and more and more in your wax. And it's really rough when it touches fungicides and some other pesticides. When they touch each other, it's glow in the dark. And I can tell you, and I know there's going to be listeners out there that are not going to believe this, but... I'm absolutely convinced that every beekeeper in the United States has fluvalinate and kumafos in their comb. Even if you let your colonies uh, make their comb from scratch, you still have this stuff. We don't even know where it's coming from. I get asked that question over and over when I do this presentation. How can I possibly have that in my colonies if you know it was never put in there? But trust me, it's present. Uh, Jennifer Berry did a, tried to do a research study not long ago, and she was looking for, uh, she needed pure wax with no contaminants in it at all. And she searched all over North America and can find no beeswax without these two compounds in it. And she was uh, going to organic beekeepers, beekeepers that let their colonies make their comb from scratch. She couldn't find any uncontaminated wax. And Roger Simons at the USDA lab in Gastonia was part of a study where they where they checked a lot of wax across the whole country. And nine, they found 98% of all beeswax in this country has those two compounds in it. Wow. And uh, this is a dangerous, this is dangerous because this stuff is uh, some, some fungicides that fluvalinate come in contact with are extremely toxic. It's a real nasty synergistic interaction. And I, I know I'm not answering your question, Bruce, but no, no, that's, that's so fine. I, I, I think it's and those two products you say are Apistan and Checkmite, right? The active ingredients. Those are the those ones that I really recommend that people don't start using again, because you're going to have issues in your colony that you don't understand. You're not going to know why your queens are superseding so quickly or not getting mated well. When these compounds are in your beeswax, it it, it makes the, the sperm in your drones less viable. The queens don't perform properly. And I'm, I'm just about 99% convinced that most of the queen issues we're having in this country really come down to the synergistic interactions that are happening in our colonies. And even so back to old comb, that's what that was your question. <laughs> well, I, that was a great segue. though. I've, I've really we well, needed to hear you know, that. I, I get asked, you know, all the time, how old is too old? And <clears> it really <throat> depends on 
what you're being exposed to. You know, if you're up in the Blue Ridge Mountains and you're, you know, where I'm at, and you don't get exposed to much, you know, maybe you can get 10 or 12 years out of a comb before you start to have trouble. Jennifer's did a study, Jennifer Berry at UGA did a study on uh, how old comb affects our colonies. And she showed that within two years, you can actually uh, get benefit from changing all your comb out. Well, we're not going to change all our comb out in two years. I can't do that. That's too yeah. expensive. And so I've looked at it from the point of view of, you know, a financial, you know, investment point of view. What am I getting for my, what's the return for my investment? Where's the point of diminishing returns for the money I'm spending? And in my situation, and this is a bit of a guess, I'm not a scientist or a researcher or a chemist, but I think at about 10 or 12 years, you start to see enough issues coming out of your old comb that you need to consider changing it out and being willing to spend the money to do so. And by the time it's 15 years old, you're really there. Uh, you mm -hmm. should not have any comb beyond 15 years. You're, that's where you're gonna start to see these synergistic interactions between the chemicals that are in our beeswax and the chemicals that, are, that the bees are bringing in and the chemicals that we're putting in there in the form of miticides. Um, so how old, if you don't know how old your comb is, how do you figure it out? It's really pretty simple. If it's really black and if the frame is black, if the woodenware is black, then you're already too late. You, and, and also weight, you know, these really old combs weigh a lot more, uh, yeah. maybe as much as 50% more. And, you know, if you get used to what a nice virgin comb should weigh and put an old black comb in your other hand, you can really see there's quite a difference in weight. And if your woodenware gets black, it, it's really quite old. And of course, the cells shrink over time. And you, you, and if you want, you don't need to buy small cell foundation. All you got to do is have twenty-year-old comb. And you got <laughs> <all there>. so. <laughs> One thing I've noticed in some of mine that is is definitely getting. I've been keeping bees ten years, and obviously, a lot of mine is just cycled out through the natural process of, yeah. you know, damage or wax moss or whatever reason. But if you see the the cells beginning to look round, you know it's you know, that's right. you know that's got to go, and so because, that's like right. you say, the multiple generations of of young bees being formed, I think, creates that issue, and so that's good stuff, Bob. But I didn't know. I mean, I I, I do believe that that you can go for a few years with it, but I I've never really. It just makes sense. You can kind of tell by looking at it. And I've got I've got a lot of comb that's probably too old. And how do you dispose of your comb uh, when you get rid of it? Do I you, throw it in the do? dumpster and it goes to the dump. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I don't have hardly any. And I, I'm going to stick with me for a minute. I'm going to tell you how I get rid of it. And then I'm going to explain why it's not so bad. Okay. I actually sell a lot of nukes and colonies. And I'm. it's not about selling my old garbage comb. It's about selling nukes and colonies often enough to where I don't get old garbage comb. You know, if you take a double deep colony and take four frames out of it every year to make nukes or whatever, you know, theoretically in five years, you've re if you've done it properly, you could rotate out every comb. And so, uh, you know, I admit that I have some combs that are eight or 10 years old, but not very many. Uh, most of my combs are, you know, one or two years to maybe five or six or seven years. So most of my comb fits in that that category right there and i maintain that by simply selling so many nukes and colonies yeah i had an interesting day with seth you know seth hill he came i went over and worked with him back in the spring and in april or may i can't remember exactly you when it was about that. yeah it was a lot of fun I and mean, a lot of a fun video uh we made there but i i'm sure he's using a lot of the principles that you use and we did exactly that we pulled you know we pulled heavy splits like we split those things down yeah. and and made a lot like i think out of 60 plus or minus colonies we made a hundred and something 103 splits or something so we yeah. really pulled them down and and tried to leave the original queens in the colonies behind but they were most of them were double deeps and so you know we were pulling a lot of comb out of there and putting them in those nukes oh yeah uh, his intention was to expand his operation also to sell bees i think in the future and so you can see how if you if you split them heavy early in the year like that if your goal is to to split bees and or and or sell bees how you can easily get that comb replaced and and you know the queen they like to be on that lots of times on some of that older comb and so it, it just can go out because you got the brood you got the everything you need the resources that you take 
So that was a very interesting day. I really enjoyed, this, you know, kind of seeing how Seth was doing things. I know he's learned yeah. uh, most of what he's done from you, if not all of what he's done from you. And so it was kind of a neat, neat way to see him operate. He's a, he's just really a good, just a good guy. It was a, just a great yeah. day. So. I know he does what I do and, and I'm <laughs> taught in this and that it sounds odd, but when we're making splits and we're putting the colony back together, we always pull the older comb to the center and then that way next spring, mm -hmm. that's where the okay. assets are that you can make nukes off of. And you can, you, even if it's just one year old or two year old compared to brand new, pull it to the center and that's what you're gonna use next spring to make nukes with. Cool.